So I'm not gonna show you exactly what we're doing here, but just wanted to show you one of our ideas and our TLC things. We've never been a fan of those fender covers because it does seem like you're protecting the paint. However, if there is any dust on the paint or anything on your cover, if you move it around, you're essentially scratching the paint. So our big thing is don't touch the paint. So what we did here for the cable, just so the cable doesn't touch. Again, just a simple little holder. But again, those fender covers, I used to think they were a good idea back in the day, but when you got a paint finish like this, that is so slick, last thing you wanna do is put a fender cover on there and swirl up the paint. All right, so from this project, Is this the ECU out of that McLaren? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. So this is what Esther makes our sandwiches in, and it quit. I don't know if I posted it, but George just figured it out. It was that guy. Yeah. So nice, back to hot sandwiches for lunch. Did you show Esther already? She was here when I saw it. Oh, okay. What was that then? I don't know. That's the weight maybe for balancing. Oh, yeah, okay. If we take that out, make it easier, but like, JDM. Yeah. It's pretty simple, isn't it? It's just that. That's it. An element. Yep. And a switch. Is yep. it? Wow. All right, we have a few S2000s here today. All very similar colors. So this one, let me tell you what this one's getting. I don't need to say anything. We're gonna be replacing this with a really good condition seat. I'm gonna change the door panels too. This is an 0405 door panel. So first off, it has the tweeter here and it has the door pocket, same on the other side. So we're gonna be replacing these with two really nice ones. And again, the seats with a pair of really nice ones. Let me show you them real quick. Is that preparing for operation there? Yeah. So here's the seats that are going in there. And this is what George is putting together so we can actually put the seats on there and swap the components over and there is a mint pair of door panels. Thank you Esther. Esther's back on the channel. She's back. She's back. <laughs> what do you think of this Esther? It's black. It's nice isn't it? Mm -hmm. I like the black with the red. The red looks really nice. Yes it does. It's a nice combination. Mm-hmm. Red calipers. Kind yeah. Of looks like something else I know, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm painting red stuff right now. I know. The red's on. Is that a good sign? I think so. I think the red comes on until it's done. That's definitely getting warm. I think you might have fixed it, George. Nice. Couldn't be that easy. No. When does this guy come on? When your sandwiches are ready? It's time to go. Telling you, stop, don't do anything. Yeah, right and now. That'll come on means you can go. Go, open it, get in there. All right, so you realize that one coat isn't going to do it, and you realize you've started something. <laughs> it looks good though, look at that. So it's going to take another coat. We're going to let this dry most of the day and then go over it. It's hard to see this, but once that is filled in in red, that should look fantastic. All right, so brakes, brakes. This is for this S2000. He is here for brakes, he supplied, and a OEM clutch, and a transmission that he supplied also. His transmission is bad, wants to change it for that one. All right, so the new rotor and caliper is rebuilt, new grease, uh, new pads, new rotor is on. I see we replace those to stainless. These are the ones that come in it that people often have a hard time getting out. Well, we have a, a nice tool that we've found that works really well and it's not an impact screwdriver. So these, when we put the stainless ones in, we put a little bit of anti-seize on there, which is also known as a space grease. That way the rotor is in place, it's held. The back of this needs to be wire brushed to make sure all the rust and debris is off there so when the rotor goes back, it sits, it sits completely flat and it doesn't have any ridges to hold that rotor crooked. And of course, all these pins need to be taken out, cleaned, and greased so the caliper floats correctly. All right, so there's always a lot of telltale signs when 
the bolts are in different places and the short bolts are in the long bolt holes and then uh, to make it work they put 58 washers on the bolt instead of using the correct bolt so we're switching the bolts around before we actually take it apart and drop it but yeah it's pretty evident that someone has been in here that probably shouldn't have been in there always makes it interesting yeah 45 washers yeah so it's good for spares though that should be the center bolt right yeah that's where I'm pretty sure the center bolt looks like so yeah that bolt should have been in there and instead it's in there and to make it work to put 48 washers on it. I don't know why there's washers on it because that bolt is like almost twice as long. Yeah, there is a lot more thread in that one than the middle one. Yeah. What's the deal with the washers? Of course, whenever these bolts look a little sketchy, especially this has got corrosion on it, we yeah. would douse it with our uh, super space grease. So it goes in and out okay now. So that one's good. So this plethora of washers are not required when you put the bolts back in the correct hole. But they're good for spares. That's some big washers too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. If we start opening uh, like a shipyard, these would be great. <laughs> <laughs> we can start putting some templates back together. Yeah, like ship washers. <laughs> How's it look? I can't really tell. Is that thing supposed to be there? Which one? This one? A little dangly thing. That's part of the throw bearing, I think. So it's an aftermarket throw bearing. Yeah. You can see that actually the balls are yeah, you can visible see here. It's pretty bad. Yeah. That looks cool. What is it? A piece of the clutch, maybe. Yeah, it's not part of the transmission, is it? No. Alright, let's pull the pressure blade off and see how it looks back there. Looks like an aftermarket flywheel. Yeah, it looks aluminum. Let's we'll see what we're looking at. Let's take it apart and definitely advise them to get rid of that if it is aluminum. Aftermarket. It's Exeti. Exeti. And of course, the good old aftermarket release bearing that sounded like a broken record, don't it? But it broke. This looks like an Exeti disc. Pressure plate, right? I'm gonna guess it is because the disc is a gutty. But yeah, that's completely let go. But yeah, aftermarket bearings, aftermarket discs, they never work out. So we see all kinds of issues here. This is probably anti seeds that somebody's used, which isn't the right stuff. This is dry as can be, and of course, the slide has grooves in it. We've just been talking about this. Whenever these are damaged, we're gonna start replacing these because there is a big step right there okay so you've seen our videos about clutches i've talked about clutches i've told you you should buy this clutch you should buy that well over the years and over probably the last couple of years in fact decided to evolve the clutch package a little bit this is just the way we sell it and it's based on our experience we see the same car over and over this one in fact this car is a perfect example, 150,000 miles is on the factory clutch. Well, most of your labor on a clutch, whether you take it to us, the dealer, or another service center, is taking it apart. Then you've got X amount of money and parts to put into it. Well, some of the little parts that really should be replaced, and again, we kind of use this as a judgment call, we look at the part and go, well, this part is good, this part is right on the edge, we'll replace it, the slider, the dust boot sometimes the dust boot is reusable other times the slider is damaged we have to fix it or replace it so rather than doing that and having every car being a little bit different we're gonna make it a blanket package which means when we do a clutch we do these parts so I'm gonna show you over here we have an OEM clutch kit laid out I'm gonna show you the parts that I would recommend that you do okay so I'm gonna talk about the OEM clutch kit this is the way we are gonna sell it whether we install it or you call us up and we send you this as a package again going over this it's the same labor to do just the main components which is the pressure plate disc release bearing and pilot bearing these are the components there's no additional labor to install them so we're going to include that just because we know you need it and again this is based on years of doing this so i'll go over the kit real quick this is a honda oem kit I've said this before, 
this is the best clutch, period. Unless you're gonna supercharge a car or turbocharge it or do anything, you know, like a 2.4 stroker kit or nitrous, this is the best kit, period. So the OEM pressure plate, OEM disc, this is the OEM release bearing, it's a Honda part. This is the Nietzsche bearing. You've heard us talk about this. This is made by Nietzsche, so we call it a Nietzsche bearing. But if you buy it from Honda, that is the bearing they're gonna give you. This is the Pilot bearing. This is usually either a Nietzsche or an NSK. This one is an NSK. So these are the main parts you're gonna get. This is something we've shown in our videos. This is called the slider. This bolts to the transmission and the release bearing actually slides on this. There is a layer of grease that sits in here and this is what is moving. When you press the clutch pedal, there is a fork that pulls this. We've seen this on a lot of cars that have some miles. It gets grooves in here, so the new bearing is actually sliding over these grooves and makes it almost like a rough feeling on the pedal and the release bearing doesn't release as quick. So this is something we're gonna make it part of the kit. You're getting one of these. That way, these two moving parts are brand new. This is the dust boot cover. This sits over the transmission. The slave cylinder is in here and the clutch fork, which is what operates the release bearing, is behind here. Again, it's a pretty basic piece, but it is very important. It keeps the moisture and dirt from going in the clutch. And you see it's new, it's nice and supple rubber. 10 years old, these get dry rotted. They turn into like a plastic. This lip rather than sealing, this lip falls apart. It should be replaced. We're just gonna make it a replacement part, every single clutch. This is the famous Honda Eurora grease. Everybody loves the way I say it, because I can't say it very well. If you buy a kit from us, we're gonna give you a full tub of this. This is the good stuff. Not only do we recommend you use this on the release bearing, but you've seen in our videos where we take the shift mechanism apart, the shift, the whole part in there, clean it, re-grease it with this. That way you've got the right grease to do the job right. Next is the main seal. This is something that is easy to get to once you've took the transmission, the clutch off. Behind the flywheel, you're gonna see this. And again, someone will charge you a lot of labor to replace this part. It's a $25 part. But if you're already in there, replace the seal. Peace of mind, do it at the same time. Last but not least, on the 2000 to 2003 S2000s, the drive shaft bolts are very soft. Most of the time they're damaged coming out. When you put them back in, it's hard to get an accurate torque spec on those things, and they're very, very cheap. So, these are the LHT bolts that we change them to. We're gonna make this part of the kit. Rather than replacing yours, even if they're in good shape, we're gonna put these in. These are grade 12.9. They're a much harder bolt, plus the socket is deeper. The key or the wrench goes in there deeper. You can pull on those, you're not gonna round these out. 2000 to 2003 only. The 05 and up have a much beefier bolt. It's actually a bigger diameter bolt and a bigger head. They don't have a problem. Just the 2000 to 2003 kits. So this kit here, if you purchase it from us, we will sell you this whole kit in a box. That way you have the right components to do it right the first time. If you're taking a Saturday morning, your buddy's coming over, you're gonna take the transmission down, you have everything to do the job right. You're not gonna be halfway through the job and then have to run to Honda on Monday to get the part. The only other thing you're gonna need is transmission fluid. We're not gonna include that in the kit because we can't ship fluids without some kind of sealed container and more likely a hazmat sticker. So we are gonna ship this as a kit. Contact us, let us know if you wanna do this. The other option of the kit is replacing these two parts. That will be the Clutch Masters FX300. It'll be a new disc and a new pressure plate. My opinion, the FX300 is the best clutch after the Honda. The only reason it is required is for more horsepower. This will hold 250, 260 horsepower before it starts showing problems. The FX300, we take that clutch to 450 wheel horsepower and it's the closest thing to stock. Feels very, very soft, very easy pedal pressure. 
The only difference is the sweet spot is a little shorter than OEM. Let me explain that. Okay, when I refer to the sweet spot, let's say this is your clutch pedal. That is where you apply the pressure. This is the clutch all the way up. This is the clutch all the way down. The sweet spot or engagement point is, let's say you press the clutch all the way down, it starts engaging here. You can ease the clutch out all the way to about here before it 100% engages. This, I call it the sweet spot, just means it's very forgiving. You bring the clutch up, you bring the clutch up little by little, it's still engaging, still not 100% locked in. The Clutch Masters FX300, I will call this sweet spot closer. So it starts to engage here, it's fully engaged here. Again, just means that this area here is a shorter amount of distance between engagement and fully engaged. Not a big deal, it's just because there is a mechanical advantage difference on the stiffer clutch because it has stiffer springs. The good news is it doesn't require any more pedal pressure to operate the clutch which means it doesn't have any more pressure on the master cylinder and slave cylinder, which will make those systems last longer. All right, rear main seal. This is what it looks like removed. You just get a little seal puller. It's like a, it looks like a hook. You pull this guy out. And then once it looks like that, you put the new guy in. And you see, I don't know if you can see or not, so it won't focus, but it's got grease already in it all the way around so that it slides on the crank real nice. So we'll get that in, get it uh, hammered down, and we'll start putting the flywheel back. Okay, so this is the transmission that you supplied us. These bolts that are in here, this is what would hold the slide. These are not the right bolts. Let me just take these out. Do it my left hand. These are not the right bolts, they're too long. Well, the slide that came off is other transmission is this right here. And as you see, there's a pretty deep groove right there. So rather than, uh, rather than trying to reuse that and sand it and recondition it, you know, it's like, if we're gonna do it, let's just do it right. I don't wanna do this makeshift fixing stuff. Again, some people give me a hard time about that and tell me, hey, you're expensive, you should use old junk parts and try and patch it up. The type of customers that are coming to us do not want patched up parts. So doing this, we're not doing anybody any favors. Uh, looking at this, no, I see in the line, this transmission seal looks like it's no good. I wasn't gonna clean that, but now I see how bad it is. That seal's no good, so. That really has to be replaced. So, again, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Don't do it twice and save the guy 20 bucks and, and then it costs him another few hundred to do it again. So, we will replace that. I wanna see if we can get this seal and replace that also. See, that one actually dry right and falling apart. When we put it back together, we can reuse it. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you were to glue it. Perfect. That, if you could put a little bit of glue on it, and clean it, and spray paint it. Yeah. So yeah, this is notorious for breaking. This is the worst one we've seen, but I'm thinking we're gonna make it a dedicated uh, package, which means you get a new one of these, you get a new slide, you get a main seal. Uh, AP1s, you're gonna get the drive shaft bolts because we see this as just a common occurrence. This is the slide off another car, but this isn't as bad as the one that came off this one. That's why it doesn't work, it's D-shaped. No, we damage that getting it out because you're going to smash them getting them out. But again, the new one goes in just like pretty much any of the other seals. Let me show you here real quick.
right, there's the new factory clutch on with the Nietzsche release bearing, grease packed into the slot there. And here's the transmission with the new slider. The splines are clean, new grease on the slider. And there's the fork there. You kind of shove it back in there because it goes in with the transmission. If you don't put that in, you can't get it back in. It doesn't fit through that hole. And of course, some new grease in there. So it's all ready to go back up, stab it in there. Okay, so the reason we're gonna give you a full tub of this is you're gonna need it to grease your shifter. What I recommend you do is take the shifter completely apart, clean it, degrease it, put all new grease all the way through it. That way, this operates a little smoother and it gives you a little bit more precise shifting if you replace these parts too. So if all goes well, the clutch will be nice and smooth. And then again, the shifter by greasing it, this is how you engage reverse, is you push down and obviously bring it over. So it makes that smoother by greasing it, plus this action here. It makes the whole shifter feel a little bit smoother. So this customer said this had an ABS code problem. Found it. So, not a big deal. That's just a replaceable part. Which I just so happened to have picked one of these up. And we can go ahead and install that and problem will be solved. So the speed sensor was broken on the transmission he supplied. Luckily the one in he said the transmission is good, so we'll switch that. Switch that over. So let's have a look at the drain plug. It's actually pretty good. Isn't it? It's got a little bit of material in there. Let me zoom in. These are magnetic, so it's going to pick up a little bit. Yeah, most of them do. If you think about what's going on in there, most of them will have material. Yeah, based on the ones we've seen, that's not too bad. So again, it's always important to drain your diff fluid and refill it. You've seen we talk about this all the time. So what most people don't realize is while we're trying to work and film, things like that happen. But it also slows us down because you keep stopping, picking up the camera, trying to get the camera to focus, which if we was putting the camera in one fixed position and not moving, we could go to manual focus, click it, and auto lock it, it'd be fine. But the problem is, we pick the camera up, film what we're doing, you know, like we have something over there, film it, point it. Sometimes the camera focuses, sometimes it doesn't. And of course, I get some excellent advice occasionally from people on YouTube. Dude, you need a better camera. Excellent advice, by the way. Excellent. So, what are you doing with that? It's putting some trash in this little bag. Okay, can you give us a part number on that trash bag real quick? The trash is a 22200-PCX-055. And what comes in that is a uh, paper towel with transmission fluid on it. Okay, so it's quantity of one, so yeah. don't overload it. Just, Just one. one. Just one. So this car, we have done the clutch. We showed you that. And the... Brakes are back together, the ABS line is on. We have to flush the brakes. It's got old dark fluid in there, and the customer gives us the okay. I didn't want to just take it upon myself to start doing stuff without getting the okay. Also, the clutch fluid, we're gonna flush that too, and that should be it. Hopefully the car runs, and hopefully it'll go down the road under its own power. Okay, so we're all done. We'll just verify, do a quick road test, make sure everything is good. But again, the OE clutch is the nicest, smoothest clutch. And again, replacing all those parts that we listed, it's eliminating any chance of failure because it's gone 150,000 miles without maintenance.